Hi. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. Um, I'm Amy. I'm 12 Plus's social media intern. What's up, everybody? I am Ms. Ebony. I am the currently the new director of community engagement storytelling at 12 Plus. Uh, hi, I'm Manaya Williams. Um, I'm just a student right now at Westchester University. My major is psychology. And yeah, that's basically my life at the moment. <laughs> what year are you in now? Um, I'm a sophomore now. Sophomore? And what are you majoring in? Psychology. Oh, you just just Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> that is. But it's fine. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, that's cool. How's your, uh, I guess, like your first year at, the first year at Westchester been like? In the beginning, it was amazing. Um, yeah. Of course, because we were on campus, like, just the whole environment. I feel like my school prepared me as far as education-wise. So, like, the schooling part wasn't as hard for me. So, it was just fun just, like, having freedom and seeing, like, oh, like, I got this group of people here, this group of people here. So, you know, um, that was fun. Then um, transitioning, right before we transitioned, I joined an organization. So... I was looking forward to, you know, being on campus with my org, but yeah. unfortunately, that didn't work out. And then online classes, it was a struggle for me. Mm. Um, I did what I had to do, of course. You know, I complained and procrastinated all the way through, but it was just not for me. Like, I basically, all the classes that I have are more discussion-based anyway, since I was a psych major, and I think at the time, I took, like, two or three philosophy classes just because mm. I wanted to. So, like, a lot of that is discussion-based learning and, like, discussion-based teaching. So it was just harder to transition from talking in the classroom with them and learning that way versus being forced to be on Zoom and not feeling it, not really engaging as much as I probably should have. Yeah. Uh, I feel that. I feel like maybe some of that, that philosophy might be having influenced by Miss Francesca. <laughs> Cause uh, <laughs> that's that's all in her realm. Um, but what are some things like, even like on campus that you were looking forward to being involved with that like may have not transitioned into like the virtual world? So like the party wise and like <laughs> social events that's wise. Real. No, that's like real. seriously, no, that's real. it was like major events like you know around the surrounding schools they were gonna have like spring fling and. May weekend, the stuff that the, my college and surrounding colleges does, and we weren't able to do that. And it just sucks, like, to have, you know, upperclassmen kind of like, oh, throwback, let me show y'all what we did. And it's like, I didn't get a chance to experience it. But, you know, it's okay, I guess. Just imagine in like two years, this is going to be you at a party with your mask on. <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> those I always, are all throwbacks. <laughs> I already told my sister, like, I'm going to be the old head at homecoming. I'm going to have to just be old, keep coming to homecoming because yeah. they took away my homecoming. So I, at least I got the experience in, you know, my first year, but. Yeah. Now, nope. canceled, so. um, That's real. Can I ask, um, when, when did y'all start going online? Because I go to Temple and we went online, like, beginning middle-ish March. And then my yeah. semester ended. Oh, okay. I yeah, we went online like beginning middle of March, but like Westchester was really prepared. So before we left for um, spring break, they had us do a questionnaire, I guess, asking who was going to travel, who wasn't going to travel, who was going to stay in mm -hmm. state, et cetera. So based on that, as soon as we got here for spring break, they told us like, y'all not coming back. They were one of the first schools to say that like, yeah, we already have a plan, this corona thing, y'all not coming back. So it was like, probably beginning of March around that time it was pretty early yeah that's good yeah I remember like I went to my class and we just didn't know what was happening and then like the next day that's when they told us oh like we have to move to online so it's good that Westchester was prepared because I personally don't think that Temple was very prepared um yeah so for Westchester what are your I mean, what are the plans for this upcoming semester? Did anything, like, did they say anything yet? 
Um, yeah, they just unfortunately told us that we're proceeding with online classes. Um, at first, we were going to move in. They had like this whole system where um, they had the whole system of how the halls was going to be run. And mm-hmm. they had, um, we were going to leave at a certain time. So like, we still wasn't going to have our full semester on campus, so to say. It was still going to be like in person for only, I think only up to like November 30th or something like that. They had it. So they were trying to compromise and have it so where we could have a little bit of in-person learning and did switch. But Corona, they said the Corona cases spiked. So they just told us like this week. So of course I'm heartbroken, but I understand. Were you commuting or were you staying, you were staying on campus? Yeah, I was on campus. He was on campus. How was like, was that like a weird transition? Like when you first started, like, Instead of like living at home, being able to like live, I know it only was like for a semester and a half. Yeah, but <laughs> but like, how was that transition of like being on the campus versus like being at like in high school when you go home? At right. The end of the day? It was um an easy adjustment for me. I feel like my mm-hmm. parents probably thought it was too easy. I was a little too excited <laughs> <laughs> to leave. I just I guess always she had. Had been independent anyway like uh, working and doing my own thing kind of because my parents trusted me and that did my thing so mm-hmm. it was just like this was another level that I just was like oh this is amazing like right. my friends all here my favorite <laughs> food right here the washer and dryer is right there like everything was just so convenient <laughs> Yeah, so that's why I really liked it. And it just showed me, you know, a lot more about, you know, having to handle things by myself, like talking to the mm. office and financial issues, things like that. It was like, you know, a nice lesson where I adapted well. Yeah. I kind of enjoyed being by myself and being on my own. Yeah, that's really, that's really nice to hear because I hear a lot of stories about people, you know, like not liking living on campus and they're lonely and they're having a hard time adjusting, but it's, it's great that, you know, that you loved your time there and that, um, you found your like autonomy and you were able to be independent. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I feel like rest system made it kind of easy though, Mm. especially like orientation week and things like that. It was like a lot of opportunities for you to really force yourself into awkward situations to talk to people so I feel like that definitely helped a lot like me get comfortable and feel like I don't need to go back home because I got people here like I have way more people here that understand me way better than at home. yeah I think that's yeah. a great thing about college because you you meet people from everywhere um and you know in high school like you see the same people every day for like four years but then in college like you just start meeting a bunch of new people yeah, from everywhere. Yeah. yeah, and that's when you start really like I feel like growing up and finding your group of friends. You know, yes. like finding yourself. Mm-hmm. Find yeah, out what that's you don't real. like and what you do like. Yeah. Been through a few little in them little certain times you see a lot about what friends you should have and who you should keep around and what you like. Cause you kinda of forced to like handle it on your own space forward. Right. Especially when you're in a different, like, new space. Like, the things that you need and the things that, like, impact your every day are changing. Like, it's not like I go to right. school, I see you passing in the hallway, and we ch- Like, you know, yeah. like, it's like I need, sometimes you need more out of certain friendships because you have other responsibilities that you're taking care of. Um, right. But, yeah, that's the, I just think the biggest thing, especially when we send a lot of students away, is, like, making sure that they find some type of community. Um, because mm-hmm. you're so used to being connected to 12 plus, right? You're so con- used to being connected yeah. to the teachers and, and, and the faculty that you, you see every day. That's your community, right? So then when, like, right. when you go into this new educational space, you like, where am I at? <laughs> right? So yeah. I'm glad Winchester was able to put, like, kind of force you to be in those awkward situations because, like, I feel like those probably are the best friendships. Like, when you, like, I'm, yes. I know you don't want to be here either. <laughs> <laughs> like, like That's you get that look, you're like, let me go sit. Y'all both thinking the same thing, like, <laughs> like, you, where you from? You from, you from all right? All right, like, we go. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that was like, that's like really dope. But, um, I want to know more about like some of the dynamics of like campus that you liked or that you didn't like. Because I know in the past, um, we've had like employees that have went, they like, went to Westchester yeah. and they have been like up and down, like situations that have happened um or specifically on campus so like what are the things that you observed and you have seen be it like 
racial or like mm-hmm. political, like you know what I'm saying? Like what's that? Because it's a totally different energy when you're on a campus and you're you're meeting new people and and all these different opinions are also there about how people feel about certain things. So what are some of the things that you know you've been able to like witness or observe while you're on campus? I'm like, of course racism I guess like I'm from Philly so like a lot of the people that I'm around they were black they were Hispanic they were like minorities so it's like I never of course I've been around white people but like I've never really been in a situation where like I'm living around them constantly and I'm around them constantly so like of course seeing like some microaggressions so it's Mm. Westchester is pretty segregated like they say it's a black Westchester and it's a white Westchester like everybody's for the most part, kind of respects each other, they don't step on each other's toes, but you can tell, like, certain events, you only want to see black people, certain events, you only want to see white people, like, it's very, we're not as diverse in the sense where you see a lot of us intertwining with each other and mixing with each other, it's pretty separate, like, when you walk in, you're going to see people with their people, for the most part, and, like, you know, it's nice to see other people besides, you know, people who look like me, but it's, like, also, like, that is something that I know the Black community has been noting and trying to um, get rid of or, like, reduce because it's, like, we're not trying to be separate from anybody, so to say. Mm-hmm. Like, we're not trying to make it to where it's, like, a segregated thing. It's just, like, we just want y'all to respect us. We cool. Like, some people cool with whoever they're cool with, and that's fine. But, like, for it to be, like, even now it's, like, homecoming. Like, um, the area that we have, it's like, I don't want to say it like that. Like Rosa Parks, back of the bus-esque. Like, it's just like very, uh, like, y'all going to get the back, the very far in, very, mm. nobody can see y'all. Very, like, because y'all are a certain way that we can't handle. Mm. Like, so, like, that's been something that I know a lot of Black organizations have been fighting for it. But I can say that the Black community, for me, has been very supportive. It's been what I wanted. Like, everybody, all of the organization that was ran by people of color or women, I went to. And it was always welcoming and warming and fun. And everybody just like, we're together. Like, yeah. we're all one. Like, we should be acting like family because we all have this commonality. So that's, like, a good thing that I love about Westchester is how it's something that a lot of the people were, surprisingly, and how focused they were on making sure that, like, as freshmen, we knew that they valued us feeling like we were all together, like, not feeling alone. That was something a lot of orgs, like, Black Men United and BSU, things like that, that they really, you know, preached to, like, freshmen there, and it kind of, like, stuck with me to this, like, Mm -hmm. I don't feel alone when I'm there. Like, I really don't. Like, even if I don't know any of them, I know I saw them in a program, they're going to be like, hey, what's up? How was your day? Like, just simple as that, because they're like, we got to make sure that we know that we have each other back and that we're there for each other. But there's definitely, like, microaggression, racism, yeah. that's fair, that's ignorant, drunk kids <laughs> doing their thing, you know, that's a different story. Yeah, right. we're going to say that for a different yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah, but just, just like being in a classroom and like, you know, having to be the only black person in a few, it's kind of like eye-opening to see how yeah. me personally, I react to those situations and how I should react. Like, it's a way to react and it's a way not to react. Like we said, not so to say violently. But I like to be firm in what I'm saying, and I like you to understand that I'm firm in what I'm saying without being so violent. So, like, that kind of taught me a balance as to, like, when to say something, when not to say something, and also how to say it. Mm -hmm. Because, like, that's, like, the misconception I feel like people have. Some people just pop off as soon as something like that happens. But it's, like, we know that that can only backfire on certain people in a certain way. So we have to go about things certain ways. But... That's just, I feel like, something that everybody who goes to a PWI has to face. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not anything that's, like, super specific to Westchester, but it's, like, that's, there. We're not yeah. going to act like it's not there. <clears throat> no, that's, that's, that's real. And I, I think about that a lot, especially, like, when we, like, advise our students throughout the year and, like, how 
in a way like their black and brown bodies will be presented and observed at in -hmm. certain spaces like just in general like I even think about that for myself when I'm like when I'm walking in Wawa (laughs) like you know like like simple things it's just like I know that like I could possibly be perceived in a certain way um regardless of like you know the space that I'm in so that's real but I'm also glad that there's like you talked about kind of like the community that you have there yeah. like you're able to to have that um and all the different organizations that are there doing the work and you're right it's like it's not that we want to be separate like we don't that's, that's not what we're we're we want right. to work together we want to be on the same page um so i hope that Westchester continues to find like creative ways that they can engage you know like a whole campus um right amy i don't know if, if temple is is doing any of you know like any of that work but have you observed anything like that on campus of like just like at least uniting students um to kind of help everybody get on the same page like i think that that's like a dope idea right um i mean i don't know i don't know if you guys heard but the way that temple has been addressing like racist students it's kind of been not that great um so very recently like students incoming students have been exposed for like previous like videos and like posts and stuff like just yeah and mm-hmm. brought them to the attention of temple and temple basically like protected them in a way and they were like oh mm-hmm. free speech mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. like they're allowed to say these things and it's just yeah like everyone's very angry obviously right and we don't think that temple is handling these things properly mm-hmm. so if you if you're ever on like instagram you look at temple's post like everyone's like commenting like oh like you need to do these basic things blah blah yeah i've seen that but i just feel like we're not being heard you know yeah but, um, also um do you know like when those like um people would come with their like Oh yeah, like yes. there's the the sign. <laughs> what yeah. the sign saying about who? It's really nice how like people of different races like come together and they just like start like <laughs> like arguing. Yeah. Like I get like, nice in a sense, but also like why are we allowing um these people to e- even be on our campus? You know. Right, but then like if right. there's another protest about something else, then it's like that's it. That's the issue. Get 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 them out of here. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. for someone that graduated from Temple, I am ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they definitely do that, but we have a lot of people who told us like it's other organizations who come out there when those people are on our campus, kind of like don't feed into it, you know, kind of ignore them, it'll make them leave faster. But you can admit that a part of it is comical that they're even on the campus trying to hey, say boo. anything like that <laughs> yeah like it's very comical and i know the guy who used to come to our campus often was very funny to me like he just would say anything out of his mouth so like i i do see you know walking to class i have stopped a few times to get a little laugh before i went to my next class because it's don't care comical. <laughs> yeah like it's just comical to me. like i need this laugh before i sit in this 45 minute class <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> That was me. Yeah. Yeah, it's like crazy. Now that I've been at Temple for like almost five years now, every time I see them, like I'm just like, oh, we're here again. And I'm just like, it's so like normal now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They've been there for all their years. years. The guy said that like 20 something years at Westchester, them people, they come in every year. Wow. That's commitment. They ain't even getting a degree. (laughs) <laughs> no. Now you come here every day for more than more hours than I do, and you ain't you ain't graduate. <laughs> Just standing here, like, he have his kids out there, everything. Oh I wow! Get it. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, they come in. Dang. Mhm. Yeah. Um, um, you got a questioning? Oh no, I just want to continue saying that it's very disappointing how Temple is handling these things because, you know, we're in Philly, like, we're in the city, you know? Right. People that we're around, it's the Black community, so it's just such a disservice to mm-hmm. Black women. Um, and I don't know, like, I don't know what's going to happen. I know that we're all pressuring them, 
So hopefully right. things will change, but it's just like it shouldn't have to be like this in the first place, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, as a yeah, student, I'm very, yeah, I'm very disappointed and kind of ashamed, you know? Because, um, you know, I'm kind of supported in a way by being a student, but at the same time, I'm trying to get my education. Right. Yeah, that's also a shame because that's this whole institution is like this is like you can't even help it. Like it's, when it comes down to the student, you can't really judge the student. It's just too embedded in a lot of these institutions. Like you know, to even feel like it's your fault unless you're act- actively partaking in being a racist. Yeah. Definitely not your fault. Temple need to step up. They they do. <laughs> they know. <laughs> No, I, but I think, like you said, like there are a ton of institutions, like mm-hmm. that. Just this is like it's embedded in them, right? Like it's in it's in the way that their policies are made. It's in it's yes. it, there are certain people that are accounted for and certain people that aren't considered, right? And certain people that are considered a little bit more because of X, Y, and Z and reasons that they may hold a little bit more weight or a little bit more power in making those decisions or or supporting those decisions or who are they, those decisions right. are going to actually uplift and help. So I think that, yeah, it's like, I don't know. So I guess but more so what I was thinking is uh, you raised up a good question about like um, making a change, right? So I kind of want to correlate that to what's going on in the world today, um, especially with like the Black Lives Matter movement and even like COVID-19 mm-hmm. impacting um, black and brown communities a lot more than other communities. Um, so I kind of want to get your feelings on that to see, you know, how you feel about that. What do you think change is going to come? Like, should we keep on protesting, keep on marching? Like, where what will actually ignite that change that we're all looking for? Um, yeah, I still talk about Breonna Taylor. Her killer's still out there. Mm-hmm. Like, it just makes zero sense to me. Um, I'm... I've been following along with the movement, of course, you know, donated some money because, you know, came out of support because, you know, had to do something. But it's just, um, it's heartwarming to see everybody come together in this way. Like, talking to, like, my dad and things like that, like, he just said how much power he feel like this generation has or just yeah. people would, like, during this time has in general compared to, like, them. Because he's saying, like, how things that he thought was true, he's finding out is debunked and stuff through social media and, like, stuff that people are actually, you know, bringing to his attention. Where back then it was less, I don't know, like, he felt as though it was less acceptable for him to, or less common for him to learn true knowledge about Black history in order Mm. to really be enraged about it. Like, I know, like, personally going to Hill Freeman, our teachers loved him love them and they made sure we knew our history like they made sure we knew everything so i knew these things because when we actually when we actually had a segment on civil rights we actually had a segment on civil rights like i was learning stuff i never knew so like it's just been nice more so to show the older generation the good that social media can do because I feel like it's a lot of critique in that, you know, social media do have its flaws, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But like it has helped me a lot in learning more about these people who are in power and learning more about these systems in general. Like th- though I had good teachers, there's certain things that of course is school appropriate and is it school appropriate. So they're not gonna say everything. So it's just like it's been really eye opening to really see everything and like feel basically what these people are feeling it's been hard actually like it's kind of put me in a little depressive state because it's like I see what's going on I know what's going on like I see it with my family all the time but it's just like it's just sad to see that it's so common for all people of color like it's not just a me thing it's a everybody thing like everybody has the same fears that I have in certain situations everybody has family members who went through x y and z innocent not innocent whatever like all those minorities have those things in common so it's kind of like that kind of hit me hard in the sense just knowing that and feeling like what can I do to lighten the rules it's like you know you got to start with yourself so I just try to 
do little things, of course, eliminate certain businesses, not eat at certain businesses, never going to Starbucks ever again. I just had to say that, like... I've been going to Wawa's trash. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> like, try to, you know, put the money back into people of color's hands, like all people yeah. of color. But it's just been, I feel like it's been a lot. Like at first, it's, it was a lot to really digest. But now I'm just angry and I just constantly post about Black Lives Matter, Trans Lives Matter, all, like, like trying to really push that narrative because this was like it was a trend almost like for some people the mm-hmm. whole black lives matter movement was really a trend for them like it i've seen people who use black lives matter for their beach photos like people who aren't people of color using hashtag black lives matter for their beach photos so like stuff like that is mm. is geared to kind of make you a little bit upset like you feel like it's a mockery of my life and my people's life and other people's life like this is not a game like people have died before during after the protest because of the same exact thing and it's just like insulting when somebody does things like that and it's insulting to me that these little tv shows are like taking off shows off air for like dumb things thinking that that's promoting black lives matter like i think i saw um, a Golden Girls episode, they use the mask. Oh, uh, yeah. And they tell us, we're taking it off because we think blackface. <laughs> <laughs> no person of color is going to mistake the mask for blackface. Like, let's be realistic. Like, at that point, it feels like you're trying to insult our intelligence. Mm-hmm. Like, you're trying to give us anything to make us feel like, oh, we're back in the green. Like, we're back in the go. We're not as racist as we were. And I feel like this time, we're not letting that happen. Mm-hmm. We let that happen before history, kind of let our guards down, thinking that racism wasn't as, you know, out there as it is, and people weren't actively dying as violently as they were back then. We kind of thought, oh, people, like, even if it is racist out there, they're not really killing, like, or killing people of color or anything like that. But I feel like now we're not letting it slide. A lot of people that I know are actively fighting for Black Lives Matter all the time like that's all they've been doing during their quarantine and i know adults who haven't done anything so i just feel like Mm -hmm. we we're not letting the excuses fly like we kind of call out the bs a lot more especially on twitter like twitter call out all bs like you twitter catches everything (laughs) everything (laughs) like oh you thought that this was a great actress listen but then like it can very much multitask because we can go from entanglement to like <laughs> the tail killer, like yes, yes. <laughs> it happens so fast it happens so fast that's why i love it so much like it happens so fast yeah we'll go from entanglement to right entangle brianna taylor's killers killer right. <laughs> it literally will go something like that like it's just something wild and crazy like that yeah so that's something that um this movement i've seen and i like a lot you know talk to a lot of people hear a lot of opinions yeah yeah, I just want to touch upon um, what you said about social media. I totally agree, you know, like, although social media can be very toxic, like, it's so helpful. Like, for me, um, I've, I learned so much, even from Twitter, you know, like, I find out all my news on Twitter, which is, yes. like, like, it's so, like, the news just comes out, like, so much faster, and I just mm-hmm. see like more news every day um and it's very informative mm-hmm. uh, what? Oh, like, yeah, and sorry. i feel like twitter fans are stalkers like twitter they, uh, people on twitter they find everything like they the news is just like scroll, oh, scroll. i guess these documents just surface that this happened but like twitter be on it right away <laughs> oh it's <Yeah>. crazy <laughs> i think like like this is, i see i see like facebook and twitter is like because everybody's talking about oh Facebook news is fake news, and it, which is is real. Like some of the the stuff that gets shared on Facebook is like not valid. Like it's not a reliable source. Right. It's from the eighty seven year old auntie <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that like is living under a rock most of the time. Right? right. But then when you go to Twitter and you have like these different like news feeds, it's actually people that have like took the time to like analyze mm-hmm. stuff and to be like and put their opinions out, and then it makes like so much more sense. Like. <laughs> 
even right. I think yesterday or maybe like two days ago, I saw that like Chance the Rapper was on Twitter like yes. going in about Kanye. Mm-hmm. He was going in about Kanye, and that. people were just like, "No, no, yes, educate him hard." Mm-hmm. And and then like he was like, "You know what? Y'all right." <laughs> like at the end, so I think like. Even though we think like these social media, like I don't really have the best relationship with social media, but like if it's right. utilized correctly, I think it could be like a super educational tool. And even just looking at like my news feeds now, they look totally different than what they look like at the beginning of this year, to be honest. I see right. a lot more people sharing um, different things that they know that their followers need to see, they know that their followers need to be talking about or hearing. So, I think in this time it could be an important tool, but even like TikTok. Like yes. I've been like holding back on downloading TikTok, but every TikTok I see is like, I was like, oh, wait, did you see? It was even one about the visor. Like if you pull down your, your yes, visor, I think you like move it this way. I was like, mm-hmm. oh wait, but like it could be such a great platform, um, right? In so many different ways to teach people different things. So especially with everybody being inside. <laughs> like yeah <laughs> all on our phones like we're we're constantly um you know checking different platforms checking different facebook feeds and and, and twitter so yeah could be a love hate thing with those platforms but like i said they could definitely teach you a lot of different things um yeah, so definitely. do you feel like kind of like your generation is looking at things totally different than like past generations have I don't want to say like totally different because history repeats itself and a lot of things are the same but I feel like we're more um open to information than the previous generation because like I said just talking to like my parents and stuff and constantly having arguments and debates and long drawn out conversations about you know because they don't really know much about trans people or like everybody on the spectrum. Because I, I have my sister, she's a part of LGBTQ, but also I'm just, I'm a fighter for everybody. Like when I was in high school, I was part of GSA, even though I identify as a straight cis female. I was a part, I was part of GSA, like because my sister and so many people that I know and that I'm so close with are a part of the community, it's like I constantly have to like, get my parents to understand that what they decide to do sexually or how they decide to identify has zero to do with you. Like, it's, it's a lot of conversations during quarantine about just a lot of different methods and different ways that I feel like older generation goes about things that they shouldn't go about it because they just feel like, oh, I'm older. I know everything. Like, I'm wiser. I got it. But it's like, you got it? You don't got it, got it. Like, you don't really right, got right. it. You got what you thought you had, but you got it no more. For the time period, you was probably cool. 2020, you're not cool at all. Like, that's basically a lot of the conversations that, or a lot of the things that I've been doing, like, with previous generations, just seeing that though there is similarities, there is a gap because I feel like we're so much more open-minded because we see everything. Like, my mom always talked about, I didn't know anything unless it was brought to the house. Like, we weren't those type of people. So I understand where why she's so closed minded. You around a certain type of mindset twenty four seven. You're a one of adopting that mindset. So I feel like a lot of us in this generation, in the generation before, you know, the millennials, they're breaking the curse. They're breaking that. Like they don't want to. They don't want to stay in that same mindset. We're very aware that we can be way more open, and we actually try to be open rather than previous generations, even if they're aware that they're open, if they don't have somebody really in their face kind of pushing their message for them, most of the times they're like, I live my life, I already did what I did, I'm just stick by my beliefs, even if they're wrong or misguided or, you know, misinformed because they don't have the correct information. Yeah. That's been a lot. But I kind of enjoy it. It's annoying, but it's just nice it's nice when people are willing to listen. Like, it's nice that I can be that that young boy in my family that's telling <laughs> all the old heads something. Like, it's just nice to be... Let me break this down to y'all. <laughs> yeah, like, it's just nice to be the young one. 
trying to push, trying to change the generation, like trying to push the generational curse behind, reveal mm. it, show y'all, let's get rid of it. I feel like that's basically was my that became my role, yeah. especially during quarantine. I'm always the one my mom, cousins, and people ask for those type of information for information. My dad calls me to have those type of like deep debates about, you know, LGBTQ and black lives and things like that. So it's nice that I can do that for people. And I feel like if people realize that they're that person in their family that just people listen to, I guess, like just people want to hear that they should try to do that because generational curses are a thing too that we need to get rid of. We need to get rid of. That's that's real. That is real. Uh, anything? You got a question? No, I just went to. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. No, like, Free I, room here. I can totally relate too because you know, like my family, I'm Asian. Like they're they're really traditional in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and I try to say my stuff. You know, like I always try yeah. to educate them, and whenever they say something that's clear. clear not with the time and not okay maybe like I, I try to educate them the best that I can but it is very hard and I agree like these are generational curses and we're the ones that have to break that but at the same time it's um I don't know like, like I said like, it's very difficult you know and it can be like mm-hmm. mentally taxing um yeah. getting out of that and trying to change their mind you know, some people just aren't willing to change. Um, mm-hmm. Like, some of my family members, like, they are, like, who they are. And as much as I would like them to think differently about things, like, I can't really do anything. So yeah. it just sucks that I have to kind of conform to them um, because they're just not willing to listen. But then mm-hmm. again, like, it's just, it's just a struggle for me because I don't believe in that and I don't want to be like that, you know? Right. If I'm not like that then it's kind of like disrespectful to them in a way if that makes sense mm-hmm. yeah i i think like because that it's all like rooted in like this tradition that like things are supposed to look a certain way like be how they are supposed to be like things aren't supposed to change mm-hmm. um and you write it we pass it down from like generation to generation and then we have a generation that's like ah, no that don't make sense <laughs> like some mm-hmm. some here don't add up that's <laughs> like how dare you how dare mm-hmm. you think we need to change something? Like we we're stuck in our ways. We're saying I think like that's even the same with just like the generations of like people in this country. Like you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like there's certain people that are just like yo, like we need to make a change. Like things haven't been working out for like the past 400 plus years. <laughs> like right. something something got to give. And then you have other folks that's just like no, we comfortable. Like don't mm-hmm. don't come <laughs> here with all that Black Lives Matter stuff because all yeah. these lives out here matter. Like what you need. Um, so I think it's just like it's, it's interesting to even like take that like that generational those generational curses into other spaces like y'all curse too like you know like y'all mm-hmm. y'all are right. in, some, in some ways as well like even though we we got our ways where like you know some some folks you know don't like when you go off tradition but like it's just not it's a, it's a everybody thing in a sense mm-hmm. like we are all still stuck in that same mindset and we are the ones that are trying to push for change and make something happen so it's like now they're looking at us like well, what y'all talking about over there like like yeah. what's that what's that mess y'all talking about over there so i just imagine like old aunties and uncles that are like i don't know about yeah. that i don't know about i don't know about those trans lives that well let me tell you about them mm-hmm. <laughs> like you know right definitely it is all a process and hopefully we're making progress yeah <laughs> yeah hopefully um how do you think i know y'all, y'all aren't going back uh to mm-hmm. westchester at least like on campus but like how right. do you think all of this stuff that is happening now with like the movement is going to impact uh the next semester like even if it's virtual or like you know what i'm saying like how do you think those dynamics will uh play be a factor in like your classes for next fall um for me personally i think I'll be better prepared because like last semester was kind of setting you know with finding out about corona and just having it in 
So I think it'll be better, hopefully better preparation on both ends, my end and on the professor's end, because though they had some things, of course, there was a lot of things they didn't have, right? So hopefully, I think I think that it'll be way better next semester, just about how they go with classes and how they do the workload. Because yeah. a lot of them were still doing workload as if we were on campus, though we weren't. And that's, right. it is a difference because I can't teach myself the information the way that you're teaching the information. So I can't do these assignments and these huge papers back to back if I'm still spending the whole week trying to process the information I was taught a week ago. Like, it's definitely, I hope that they took that into consideration and changed that. Um I know some of the orgs, they're doing Zoom, be a Zoom thing. So, like, just trying to do little stuff like yoga on Zoom. I did that oh. a few times. Um, like, little things, discussions I've seen been held on Zoom. Like, book clubs is, like, a thing now, which mm-hmm. is crazy to me. Because I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool like I, yeah because I love reading but like people used to just be like oh you read oh okay you read but now it's like oh, book club I got a book club right. so I think that's cool like that stuff like that is popping up yeah and for me personally definitely a lot of zoom parties are going to be happening because that's what happened <laughs> when, cor- yeah. like, when I first ended school <laughs> me and my friends zoom parties every night <laughs> Every night, so. that's that's cute though. I'm not gonna lie, like I had um me and my my four closest friends, we were watching Insecure every Sunday. We would have like an Insecure Zoom yeah. party and just like watch it. But yeah. it's, people getting creative, so like you know, yes, yeah, Zoom I, somebody DJ on Zoom. <laughs> yes, oh my gosh, I went to a whole party where it was like four DJs on Zoom, like taking turns. Like yeah, okay, you go, my turn. <laughs> Yeah. This is like this is our own little verses right here. <laughs> That's dope though. Enjoy that though. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. I just think things are just more and little events are going to be on Zoom, of course. Yeah. So like, everything is um Zoom University here. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. It's super nice that you know people are starting to be more creative and we're having like parties and stuff on Zoom and like you know like watching yeah. together with your friends like at least like that's something we can do. But yeah, going back to school like I totally agree. It was so much harder online than I thought it would be. Like at first, mm-hmm. so I was like, oh my God, yes, like I don't have to drive to school no more. Like I don't have to. Right. Drive to I'm broad. Like this is. <laughs> great, but then. As time went on, I was like, dang, like, I have no motivation to do anything. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. all the time in my room. Like, there's nowhere to go. Like, I'm just I'm really tired all the time, you know? And I, yeah. I have no motivation whatsoever to do any work. And for my one class, like, it was popping because um we didn't have any more exams, which was great. Um, and mm. it was like, a bit more lenient. But um, now that next semester is going to be online too and they kind of like have a grasp of what's going on like I don't know like mm-hmm. I'm kind of like a bit worried that the workload is gonna get rough because yeah. it's not as easy as people yeah. you know like just being it's really in not in the same environment like it's it's not good for you and I hope that they take that into consideration and they're not too um hard on us mm-hmm did you guys have like a um like an alternative grading system? The temple do that for you? Yeah, I didn't do it because my grades were okay, but I know like a lot of people took it. Yeah, grade. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely did that. I hope if that's an adjustment, if they kept that for this semester, I would be happy. Yeah, I wonder. I would feel more comfortable. Maybe I hope they implement it for this up upcoming semester too. Mm-hmm. So what are some things? I mean, Amy, you could jump in on this too. But like, what are some things that you think like you need to be successful for next semester? Like, since it's going to be on, like, what are some specific? Because a lot of people are going to be hearing this, so like, put it out there. <laughs> um, but like, just to kind of like think through, like, what are things that you think would kind of make help you be successful with mm-hmm. all everything going on right now? Be it you know. 
COVID, whatever. Like, yeah. how can you? Because, like, I think also, like, it's being at home, but it's also, like, it's, like, mental health things. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's balancing things like that, where it's, like, yeah. even, like, sometimes I wake up, like, all right, roll over, get get, get this done, get this done, mm-hmm. get this done. But, like, it's different when you're on a campus and you have, like, a group of people that you're moving with. Yeah. And you're just, like, all right, you got that done, you got that? All right, yeah, I'm going I'm to knock this, this paper out real quick. You have right. that that bond that community like what are some things that you specifically feel like you would need or other students would need to have a successful um semester you know virtually next fall um definitely a planner of course a planner overall in college was helpful but Mm -hmm. i feel like actually planning stuff out has helped because I forget the days like I've forgotten there they all blend together (laughs) Like, so bad, like, wake up thinking it's Tuesday and it's actually Friday, like, so bad. So, that has helped, you know, set reminders on my phone. Um, education aside, picking a hobby to balance it out. Because, like, I started painting and, like, reading more. Because it just felt like I was doing the same exact thing every day. Like, just going from mm. work to sleep, like, doing work and going straight to sleep, that's not healthy it's not like it was not fun I realized like I'm just waking up draining myself so I did pick up a hobby to like break in between um changing settings when you do your work because I'm not going to lie at first I was that person on Zoom in the bed <laughs> pillow top my pillow like I was that person Cam- on Zoom camera the off <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Or got the pillows propped up in a certain way so they can't really tell <laughs> that I'm still laying down. Yeah, that was me. And it was, you don't really learn much because you don't take it as serious. Like, I was not taking it as seriously when I was laying down. I was too slow laying down. So changing the setting, definitely. Like, if you don't have a desk in your room, just, I know my friend, she's been going downstairs in the dining room and doing her work and realized that, like, she get a lot more done when she changed her setting because she's still, like, mm. she in a work mode. Like, she's in her work setting. So, like, finding, like, your work setting, I feel like, you help a lot. Um, some good music for me, like, music has been my life. I've been listening to music 24-7 all day. So, I feel like, you know, having, most important, like, aside from just, you know, having a computer and a planner and knowing what you're doing and doing your education, I feel like the main point, like all of, everybody gets that already. Everybody knows what they have to do educational wise. I feel like that's very cut and clear, very obvious. I feel like a lot of the times we don't talk about what you should do after you're done school, like start finding like an actual plan for the entire day. Cause I know when I was in school, it was just like, okay, I'm done by 11 with all my classes. I'm just done. But, like, having, like, a planned schedule for, like, the rest of the day, knowing that, okay, after I'm done these classes, I have something to do afterwards, helped me get through classes way better towards the end because I knew, like, it's not the only thing I'm doing all day. It's not the only thing draining my energy. So I think that's, like, a big thing. At least for me it was because the school part is, like, even if I complain and procrastinate, I'm going to get it done. But everything else that's where I was lost personally that's where Mm -hmm. I kind of went down when I didn't have any other structure in my life besides school kind of like oh this is not good for me so yeah definitely that um and a planner again because planners really help like clean out really like tired day yeah it's like writing stuff down yeah it's been very helpful yeah definitely a planner too like every single day I would I mean I would try every single day to write down like everything I wanted to do like just make a list Mm -hmm. oh like you need to do this homework like you need to do laundry blah 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 blah. like work out at this time like just Mm -hmm. having trying to have a schedule I think it's very like helpful and it that's like one thing that you can control you know like just having something structured like that like you don't have to follow it but just writing it down the night before or the morning of your Mm -hmm. day of your day I think it's it can it can help a lot um and definitely try to change your setting like I have a porch so sometimes when the weather mm-hmm. is nice, like I try to sit outside to get some fresh air instead of being cooped up inside all day because that mm-hmm. really sucks um yeah just getting some fresh air um yeah I mean I think it's just a really weird and hard time right now mm-hmm. just, yeah navigating through school 
basically like I said like it's it's just not the same and it's not motivating I mean I hated like traveling on campus but you know like you can't deny that that experience is totally it is like better um mm -hmm. like motivated and you're like in a classroom so you have to stay focused you know right and at home all the time um and stuck inside it's just like you don't want to do anything mm-hmm yeah. Even just like having the resources on campus, like I remember when my first semester at Temple, when I commuted, I was I was at the tech until the next morning for class because I could you know stay there and stay focused. As I knew, as soon as I went home, I was going to sleep or I was not <laughs> like I was had no worries about this class. So just even having access to like those simple resources that you know at the end of the day you pay for. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So being able to utilize them because I think even for me like working from home. It's like, uh, I was used to having like a work life balance with like, all right, nine to five, I'm working five until the next morning is my time, right? But mm -hmm. now it's like this weird blend of like, you're still home, yeah. but you still gotta, you know, work <laughs> these eight hours, right? So it's like yeah. finding that balance of like waking up a little bit early. And I've been, I've been rollerblading, I've been roller skating, so oh, I'm just like, cool. all right, for, for an hour, I'm gonna do this because that's what I need to do for myself, to, you know, to have that balance. And I'm gonna go home and and change my setting and then get to work. So I think mm -hmm. even like on the campus life and in real life, you know what I'm saying? Like all of those things that y'all named are super helpful. Um, I started also like bullet journaling, which like, I don't know yeah. if y'all heard of it, but I love my bullet journal. I'll be like, check mark, check mark, Over there. arrow, arrow. <laughs> check, 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 arrow, send. Ooh, do that tomorrow. Cause I ain't got time today. So it's also kind of keeps the, the creative juices flowing. So yeah. Man, 2020 is weird. 2020 is in a weird time. It's and it's we're only halfway through, so I don't know what's up next. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys have to spend a birthday during quarantine? Was any of your birthdays like during? Oh, yours was. No, mine is in September, but I'm pretty sure. Oh, I mean, pretty oh sure. yeah. So yeah. That's, so my birthday weekend was like right before like quarantine got real so my birthday weekend was March 13th so like Ooh, I remember yeah. on my birthday like our boss saying like all right and like we're not we're, we're going out for two weeks like I don't know if the school mm -hmm. district is going to call it or not but for our safety we you know we're going to work from home remotely so by the end of like that day that Friday the school district called it and was like all right so we're right. out for two weeks like we're working from home so it was like my birthday weekend was like weird <laughs> like we were out there was hand sanitizer and like people right. with gloves everywhere and I'm just like in the settings that I was in it was like weird to see like <laughs> people with like masks like down here and like not really sure what was going on yeah, like should I um, put it on should I not yeah it's just like should I should I not like I don't know so it was like like literally like right before everything kind of like shut down so I, I'm happy about that that I got you know to celebrate my birthday but I know I have like a lot of friends that unfortunately had to figure out creative ways um, to celebrate their birthdays because I, I I can't imagine. I know that's just like, it just, it's just, it's weird. It's weird. It's such a weird time. So I like just yeah. dodged it. <laughs> My birthday is coming up. It's August 21st. I don't really know what I'm going to do. I'm yeah, probably going to do Zoom party. Like, yeah. <laughs> Treat myself to some food or something. Like a real elite. Um, okay. Dang, sorry. 
<laughs> what was wrong with my internet? Oh, it was still recording though, so that's good. <laughs> that's weird. Uh, what did I miss? <laughs> um, I was just telling her how I hope she has a good birthday and how. And oh yeah. Her kids and stuff. They're gonna look back at this and they're gonna be like, oh, like what happened during this time and blah blah blah. But you know, like we grew up like reading like crazy like illnesses and like crazy mm-hmm. stuff. Like, yep. Like, and then now it's happening to us. Right. Yeah. It's uh, 2020 is a, a crazy year in the history books. Yeah. A lot of friends I have, they joke and say they're not going to tell their kids about this year. <laughs> this year don't count. Don't count. We went from, I don't know, 2019 was a little rocky too. Yeah, 2019 was a little something. Honestly, like, I don't know. <laughs> they're gonna be like yeah, like like the black the blackout era like nothing happened like mm-hmm. it didn't even exist <laughs> the world just shut down i don't know i don't know yeah it's crazy um so we've been we've been chatting for like an hour i do want to ask two more things before uh we close up one i want to since you said you've been listening to a lot of music i want to know what's your top song that you've been listening to right now Oh, you about to hit the Apple good. Music? About to go on Spotify? Yeah. Was- <laughs> because I okay, so I like emotional songs. I'm that okay. person. Oh, I like the you know? yeah. So you know she did this <laughs> job, like because you know she did this job. <laughs> but um, the guy that I've been listening to a lot. His name is um Giveon. Yeah. You know him. <laughs> I love him. We're friends. Like, yes, I love him. I've been listening to him all the time. Yeah, his voice is just, yeah. it just does something to me. So yeah. honestly, I, if I had to choose a song by him, mm, I'm going to say Favorite Mistake by him, yeah. give me on. Because that's just, like, listen, he has a I very cool voice. Yeah, yeah, like his voice is so deep. Answer, a little is, bit. <laughs> you gotta have the air. Yeah. I love him. That's Wait. what I've been listening to constantly. I'll just give a recommendation then. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. All right. All right. Hold on. Let me let me, let me pull out what I've been listening to. And I've been listening to um the Hamilton soundtrack. Really? I heard it was good. <laughs> Ernest, Ernest will be proud. <laughs> I miss Ernest. Oh, oh, I gotta see Ernest. I haven't seen him in so long. We had, Ernest, a, man. We had a get together actually, and we played Hamilton on the TV. And you know, I think oh. Ernest was just like lip singing along. I'm just like laughing at him. You know? Oh, see, that's because me and Ernest, we've been here since freshman year, like. Oh. We've been so close since I was in freshman. Well, I love him. Uh, tell him you said hi, that you missed him. Oh, no. I think I still have his number. I'm going to try to find it. Tell we'll be happy to hear from you. All right. Amy, anyway, Amy, you got a song? I do. No, you go you first. Go for okay. All right. What's, what's, all right. So when I, I got have, I listen to like a range of music, like mm-hmm. from very, um, Young Thugger, all the way to like uh, <laughs> like Snow Allegra, right? I, feel, yeah, so like, I know, I know. Yes, that's mental with me. I feel that. Like it's be times where it's like, you know what? I'm I'm just I'm chilling. Like I put some some gunner on, and I'm like, mm-hmm. all right. Yeah. <laughs> so right now, I would say just because Snow Snow Allegra, Snow Allegra just dropped a new track. Uh, dying is it dying for your I love? That. I just that, that I just literally just see, got that. See, look, that yeah, fire. The, the visual, the visual is is like crazy, and I I don't know. I just I love her voice. Like she reminds me of kind mm-hmm. of like this Sade type feel type yes. vibe. Um, but specifically for this song, like I think like I've been listening to like a lot of her mixtapes and then like the album mm-hmm. that she dropped or whatever. Um, I think last year or two years ago. But it seems like this song is very much for like the radio type drone. Like this is like like I want y'all yeah. to be able to like uh, you know, yeah. back. Um, but it's like I still like it, even though it's like it seems like it's for like the mainstream. So she, she's getting there mm-hmm. now. So I can't even 
you know, I like when I have artists that like nobody knows, and I'm like, yes, to this one, to this. <laughs> but so if I had that, if I had to put one song like right now that's in my top, it, it would definitely be Snow Allegra. It's dying for your love, cause a one, just a like one, just a one. Mm-hmm. We gonna have a whole playlist by the time we yes, I'm, we could be sharing playlists. <laughs> I gotta follow y'all and for music. Yo, hold up, hold up. <laughs> All right, Amy, what um, we listening to? Yeah, like Eb, I really, yeah, I'm really into like different kinds of music, but my favorite is R and B. I love R and B. Um, like I love SZA. SZA is SZA is my girl. Yes. Um. But I'm waiting I for a new album. Like she, she playing. I, she is. I think she dropped one. She though. dropping something. Because I heard on so. Twitter, right? she has said a little Twitter, something Twitter. and sent something to her mom. And her <laughs> mom was like, oh, this is great. Da, 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 da. So I think she's coming. She's I'm coming. coming. Yeah. Okay. I'm waiting. I'm waiting, sis. Yes. <laughs> her last album, that's like my, that's my album. Like, Yo. Every day driving to Temple, I'll be playing that album. Like every single oh, day. Like that yes. is broken. <laughs> <laughs> <That's-> yes. <laughs> No, I I'm with you. I love I love that album. Mm-hmm. So I might put I might put that song on. Yeah, now I gotta listen to it again. <laughs> oh, wow. I remember. I'm not gonna lie. There was one song on the album where I think it's her grandmother that's talking. Like, uh, if if you ain't got control of yourself, like if somebody else gonna have yeah. control of you. So, so I ain't gonna lie. This one time I quit a job, <laughs> and like. <laughs> I put that joint on blast. I was like, I ain't gonna let this job control me. Like, they don't, mm-hmm, they don't know how valuable I am. Like, they don't know the things that I bring to the table. Like, like boop, 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 like going in. And I was like, I put that joint on and I walked right into the supervisor office. Like, listen, let me tell you about X, Y, and Z. Like, I went yes. in and I was like, I don't care. Like, this is my last day, so I'm gonna just tell y'all everything. <laughs> and I was like, I love to out. see it. But if I had that album, I probably would have had the inspiration to do that. No passion. Like, yeah. It's that energy, you know? hmm I love her. Her voice, too, is just, like, it's yeah. enough. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, yeah. like I love Beyonce. I love all these, like, very, mm-hmm. like, powerful, soulful singers. But, like, sometimes when you got this little, like, subtle-type voice that, yes. like, is a little bit more relaxing, mm-hmm. you just, like, you just vibe out. You vibe out. Mm-hmm. Vibe out. Yes. I love vibey music. Like um, another person I really like as of lately is um Brent Bayes. Oh, uh, Brent Fire. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about. I like yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Makes like toxic things sound so great. Like he just he is such a like narcissistic like <laughs> Oh, but he makes it sound like he's just it's, it's his it's voice and the beautiful. beat and it, and it. <laughs> I love it I love it I be having my airpods on blast and knowing the world just in it I love it um so. what do y'all heard about Umi do y'all know Umi yes Umi yes, yes, yes. Umi her song um remember Umi am I listen to Umi she's like hard. oh yes 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 yeah, but the song that I want to recommend is White Tea by Summer Walker and No One Noah. Oh, yeah, that just dropped. That just I know that. New Wait, because we have the same exact music taste. I might need to have your <laughs> Apple Music. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying everything that's on like yeah. <laughs> right <Yeah>. now. <laughs> that's crazy. But nah, yeah. I'm going to have to check. I'm going to have to check Umi out. Yeah, Her voice is so pretty. Yeah. I'm about to. Um, oh. Pink sweats. Pink sweats. Who's that by? Flex. It's a, it's a guy. Pink yeah, sweats. I've heard that. I've heard. I've heard. Honesty. The song. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, 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 yep. I know you're talking about. I know you're talking about. That's like PND. His newest album is. Is okay. banging. I'm K Oh, she froze again. Oh, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, not again. I don't know if I'm not again. I think it's my, my nephew's here. Too. My nephew's here. And he's been mm. using, like, the PlayStation to, like, use the internet, too. And my internet's like, hold up. We ain't never had this much this much power <laughs> used at one time. <laughs> right. 
Um, Kalani. Yeah, love her. Her album was good. Her last album was good. Not gonna lie, Megan, Megan the Stallion, Megan the Stallion last little EP John. There was some bangers on that. It was. It was some. It was some bangers on that. I don't know how I feel about her newest song that's out now. The hot the, girl. Um, the or the it's like. Yeah, it's it's the remake of. Easy, um, easy, easy. Mm, easy. I don't know. I, don't know. How I, feel I about think it. I kind of like it. At first, Little I was bop. like. Mm. But then listening to what she's saying, it just makes you feel good. It makes you feel like, yeah. I, I think all, all her music do that. Her music is super, like, empowering on, like, mm-hmm. very, on these different levels where it's like, oh, like, yeah, girl, the way you said that, like, I'm not the co I'm going to use that for a caption. Exactly. <laughs> caption worthy. Right. Like, yeah. like, let me let me drop that bar real quick. Um... All right, so now that we got, we're gonna get a playlist started <laughs> for uh, the discuss discuss the plus series. Um, so you said you've been working on like some paintings and stuff. You got some that you can share with us? Yeah, they're right here, actually. Oh, <laughs> let's see what's up. So I'm not gonna say this one. This one is so beautiful. <laughs> um, this. So the first thing, this is how it started. The first thing I did was this. Ooh. And um, we were at, I was at my friend's house, and she uh-huh. had these little canvases from the dollar store. She's like, let's paint. And I'm like, you can get them from the dollar store. <laughs> oh, okay. So we stayed up to like 4 a.m. painting, and I'm just like, wow, this is fun. I want to do this. Mm-hmm. So literally right after I left, I spent a good $100 on canvas and paint and stuff <laughs> but I don't have that many pieces because it takes me a long time to like get inspired and then do it yeah. and then yeah. I have a whole like setup and just gotta get the music gotta get the instant gotta get the gym. oh that yeah. is lovely even like the yeah. details and like the, the blanket or the yeah like, that's like my yeah. thing like this yeah. is like my thing doing like yeah. the multi-color I don't know that's I just like dope. it that's dope. Um, Even that detail and like the hair too. Ooh. This? My dad, he's he kind of tried to give me this color scheme, like just having a red beard for some reason. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he was an artist, so he just thinks that you know better than me. He, he was but, like, you got it from me, so here you go. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I put my own spin to it. This is like yeah. right when riots and things were kicking off. So I just was like. Mm. I don't know. That's what I felt that night. Yeah. And these two are the same, but they were, I did them on different occasions. Yeah. Emma showed them to me. Yeah, yeah. that's the ones I sent Emma. So, like, this is, like, the first attempt, and, like, those is cute. Like, I'm not mad at it. I do yeah. like this attempt better. Hmm. They could be like a set, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they could, yeah, they could like, be day like, and night, this, you know? <laughs> Like with this piece, I also did this piece. I'm sorry. Wow. wow. I really like this one. Yeah. And I see like the, the pattern with the, the, the details. Like, you know, like mm-hmm. I like the multi layer colors. That's that's dope. Yeah, that's kind of like my favorite thing to do. So, yeah, I don't know. I was going to like, I'm not really like selling color. Like, I'm not like, yeah. oh, buy this. But yeah. if people want it and I'm not doing anything for it, they can definitely grab it. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm definitely going to do like this as a set because people told me to. I like this as a set. It's like it's different, but it's the same. Yeah, in a way. I feel like they they complement each other in unique ways. Mhm. Yeah. That's all I have really that I've finished. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so. Uh, thank you for sharing. Sure. Sure. Uh, I do have an outlet, you know. Yes, I've always like liked the drawing, but I've never painted. And for some reason, I felt like painting was harder than drawing, but it's just like shading in the colors. It's just like making a coloring your own coloring book and coloring it in. That's mm. how I see it. So that's why I'm able to make it so simple. And yeah. I try to do more simpler shapes just because I feel like that's just the aesthetic that I came up with when I was just painting one day. But yeah, definitely is a lot of fun. 
I recommend everybody to start painting. Like anybody can just look at a picture, draw the stuff we see, and start painting. It's so fun. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine how like soothing and relaxing it is to just like to feel something. Oh, like, you know, like you know, like things like that. So, no, so I think it's a Dollar Tree, get you your canvases for a dollar. Get you some paint. You know, Michaels be selling it for like fifty cents. Walmart be selling True. it for like fifty cents. True. It's definitely something I would recommend anybody who got any little inkling of creative juices to do. Definitely. But uh, we got a whole playlist. We about to get put the playlist on, get the canvases, mm-hmm. get the paints, you know, set the vibes up. <laughs> and we good. <laughs> yes, definitely. We got a whole vibe here. This whole right. thing is a vibe. Right. Oh man. Um, but you got any other questions, Amy? If not, um, I just want to thank you. You know, we appreciate you spending, you know, this hour and some change with us just, like, chatting it up. Um, mm-hmm. what I think our ultimate goal with these series is, like, when we worked in the centers, like, we were able to chat with students like this and mm-hmm. talk about things all the time, um, be yeah. it at Hill Friedman, at Kensington, um, because I think that that's the core of the work that we do. Like, you know, if we not, if we don't know you and the things that you, you, you value and you believe, then it's hard for us to, to advise you to go into certain places or to push mm-hmm. you to, to have a designated path. So I think that starting this series, like we'll be able to still engage with students in that way, especially because COVID is COVID and we don't right. know when we're going back. So I think even, even so just given like our alumni, um, a platform to amplify their voice and to talk about the different things that are going on because like at one point it was just like you were just focused on the K-12 educational space because that's where you are right but like now Mm -hmm. you're out in the world and you're experiencing um life the way that a lot of adults are and and but I feel like students and young people have so so much power in their voice so I do appreciate you you coming here you sharing you know your concerns your opinions with us your artwork um and your paint your paintings and your playlists um it's been really dope i've been, I've, I've had a great time so no thank I you i really you. appreciate y'all for inviting me and letting me you know do this i really think we should make a playlist like i'm really down for it yeah no um, we're about to have a, 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 a discuss with yeah. the playlist <laughs> yeah. that's so <laughs> cool i love it, it. <laughs> but um yeah i just want to I did this because Talk Plus has done so many things for me, like, like, it's just, it has helped me so much through high school, and, like, you know, especially Ernest, he's helped me a lot, and, like, you know, shout out to, like, Francesca, who's up there, and, like, Quadri, who was there when I was there, you know, people like that, they really helped me a lot, and it was just always so fun at Talk Plus, and I remember, like, that's why I became, like, a little 12 Plus leader, and I I was so sad, like, coming to Westchester that we weren't going to have, like, a 12 plus, so to say, because, yeah. like, those people really was just, like, a support system, unlike any other support system that I had. It's, like, it's a support system I feel like everybody needs. Like, 12 plus has done everything to make my life easier. Like, when I was freaking out during college, before college, and the would come to me like, <laughs> okay, I want to help you. Like, I've never, you know... Yeah, they, you guys know me, but, like, you guys don't know me as much as other people know me, and they do, Trump has done a lot for me, yeah. and I just feel as though that people forget about the great things Trump Plus do once they move on to go to college, so that's why I also did this, and I appreciate y'all for reaching out to me, because I just wanted to send some love on y'all, because y'all make it, y'all made a difference for us and Hill Freeman, and then so for me, with a condiment trash, a little bit more trash than it was. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> no, we definitely yeah. appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I think I know Ernest and Francesca are probably gonna be hyped when they see this video and they see. This. <laughs> yes. so, I already know Ernest. I, I, I yes. gotta be in with Ernest, so he's gonna be like, "Oh wait, wait, what? Yeah. I'm texting." <laughs> Yes, Ernest, <laughs> Francesca, Jocelyn, Claudia, everybody. Yeah. They really was like amazing at this plus center. Um, I'm just glad cool. that you guys are continuing to put something forward because it's needed, especially like well, Philly. Definitely yeah. like Philly area. Yeah. Most definitely. All right, wait, I'm going to stop recording now.